lot of people assume that bodybuilding was born in the modern era. However, the history of bodybuilding has its roots way back in time, from the eras of primitive people looking to get a strong and toned physique. Even though modern bodybuilding is far from what it was when it all began, the main reason for its success and promotion over the years were exactly the same over the different eras that massively shaped and influenced this sport. The earliest record of bodybuilding dates back to the ancient Greeks, long before it was a sport. Back then, bodybuilding was seen as a way of developing the body and establishing new records in the so-called gymnasiums, where the athletes would train, prepare, and develop their bodies. This was officially referred to as the true start of bodybuilding. Even though, at this time, the athletes were not using any form of resistance training to shape their bodies. They relied on a battery of physical exercises to improve their skills and reach new records in their sports. As time went by, a concept of the ideal physique was gradually developed. By the 11th century, the Greek ideal found its way into Indian culture. It was around this time that we began to see an archaic incarnation of modern resistance training, the use of dumbbells and weights to grow bigger and stronger muscles. The pre-competition era in bodybuilding starts around the early 1800s, a time when weightlifting was in focus so much that the practices of it seemed archaic. In addition, men would compete in events that involved pulling carts and lifting animals. The general physique of these competitors featured a protruding stomach with thick and fat limbs. From this time, up until the early 20th century, the public would gather and watch traveling strongmen try to outlift each other. Though not a physique competition, these resistance training strongmen were involved with competitions that held official records. These strength shows continued to hold interest up until the pre-steroid era, which started around the 1930s. One of the fathers of pre-competition bodybuilding, or weightlifting, and a great example of a strongman, was Eugene Sandow. Born in Königsberg, Prussia, today's Latvia, Sandow had a normal childhood and teenage years. He was inspired by the circus. While in the circus, Eugene Sandow was inspired to develop his bodybuilding or weightlifting skills. Even though his first interest was in developing acrobatic talents, Sandow met a man named Louis Dorlacher. Dorlacher recognized the young Sandow's talents as a potential strongman and real-life muscle man. As was mentioned earlier, bodybuilding was not an official pursuit during the time of Eugene Sandow. During this era, there was a lot of trial and error people did not know what was and what wasn't possible. Lifting technique was still in its infancy. However, after months and months of training, Eugene got to the point where he was ready to participate in competitions and show the world his special talents. Shortly after this, Eugene and Lewis traveled across Europe. They became well known at the time as Strongman and his manager. In 1889, in London, Eugene managed to defeat a well-known stage strongman named Samson. 
At only 22 years of age and with a bright future, he was confident in his profession and continued to show the world what he had. This made Eugene Sandow a major attraction and an inspiration for many people who wanted to become as strong as him. Luckily, Eugene Sandow took advantage of his popularity and launched the first mail-order fitness business. By the end of the 19th century, in 1897, the first bodybuilding gym was launched. It was called Physical Culture Studio and was based in London. Sandow positioned himself as what many consider the first professional bodybuilder and found ways to further capitalize on his era's fascination with the human body. Rather than simply continuing to perform on the circuit, lifting great weights and entertaining crowds with his feats of strength, Sandow turned to the art of posing. Using a specially designed posing box with lights fitted at just the right angle to highlight each of his bulging muscles, he would flex and pose in nothing more than a leopard skin loincloth. He was considered so perfect that the Natural History Museum of London took a plaster cast of his body as a representation of the ideal form of manhood. It is not surprising that men wanted to emulate him. At this time, his biceps were an impressive 19.5 inches around. Something extraordinary happened in the history of bodybuilding on September 14, 1901. It was on that evening that the famous Anglo-German physical culture entrepreneur Eugene Sandow held an event called simply the Great Competition, the first major physique competition the world had ever seen. There had been a nationwide search for contestants and the 60 semi-finalists who came from all over the British Isles. Had been assembled in the cavernous areas of the London Royal Albert Hall. The judges of the contest were called from the best that the turn of the century British high society could offer. One was a sculptor, Sir Charles Laws. Another was Sandow himself. And the third arbiter was Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, creator of Sherlock Holmes. These men narrowed down the field to 12 contestants and the finalists were told to stand on pedestals where they could be seen to good effect. Despite their silly looking black tights, leather belts and leopard skin loincloths, the men were inspected very carefully by the judges. At last, the three top winners were announced, and each of the lucky victors came forward to accept an extraordinary prize. A beautifully sculpted statuette of Sandow himself. The third place winner received a statue made of bronze, a silver for the second, and for William L. Murray of Nottingham, a golden statue was his reward. The magnificent statue that was rewarded to the competitors in this early contest was fated to have a long and distinguished afterlife. It reappeared briefly as a trophy in 1950 
and was resurrected most gloriously of all at the Mr. Olympia contest of 1977, and it has remained the symbol of bodybuilding's most coveted prize ever since. Today, it is recognized by many in the bodybuilding world, but few realize its long and convoluted history. With this, Sandow gained even more popularity and continued to work on developing the science behind bodybuilding. His death at 58 due to a brain hemorrhage in 1925 did not stop the many people after him to continue his mission and dedicate their lives to bodybuilding.